Win Anti-Debug 0x300. This challenge is a little bit invasive. It will try to fight your debugger. With that in mind, debug the binary and get the flag. Uh, so information on downloading, information on making sure you have uh, the Visual Studio libraries, and there's some hints. There's an infinite loop to constantly check for the debugger. Get past the infinite loop and maybe patch the binary to jump to the appropriate location. And if you've done everything correctly, the flag should pop up after five seconds. And it talks about this debug view program in this internal suite. Uh, so that's going to be super helpful. What this program does is allows you to monitor the debug output without actually running a debugger. Right here it says you don't need a debugger. So we're going to be able to run this challenge, see what's being printed to the debug screen without having a debugger at all. Um, so this challenge actually flagged the antivirus on my computer. So I grabbed a copy of a Windows 11 uh, eval virtual machine from Microsoft. You can download that from them. It's about 21 gigs. And so here we have um, the program, if we run that as administrator, you'll see um, you're not allowed to launch using a debugger at all. This fights the debugger. Don't be surprised if your debugger crashes or exits unexpectedly. Touch the debugger and get the flag. So actually that's not what I'm going to do. I'm not going to attach a debugger and get the flag. I'm going to use that debug view tool. Uh, that they specified. So we've got that here. We'll run the debug view. It's a 32 bit executable, so I'm going to run debug view, the 32 bit one. I'll come back here and run the program. And you can see. Here it's printing, and then every five seconds we get this no debugger was present exiting successfully. So let's go take a look at the code now uh, to figure out what's going on with that. I'm going to load it in Ghidra. Normally I have it preloaded, but the loading process here, because they've given us a PDB file, which is the debugging information, is a little different. So I'll go ahead and import. Win anti debug. Oh, I should mention uh, one thing that I had to do before that um, is this file was packed with UPX. So I downloaded a copy of UPX uh, for Windows. I ran UPX D on the file, and that took away the, the packing, uh, which basically encrypts and compresses the file so that I'll have the, the real code. So after running UPX-D, I'm going to import this program. So normally what I would do after it gets here, um, is I double click on it and I would analyze it, but I'm not going to analyze this one. The reason I'm not going to analyze this is so that I can load that PDB file. So we're going to browse, load that PDB file. It says it's not an exact match. That's not going to be a problem. What that's going to do is it's going to give me back all the function names, all the variable names. Uh, the Windows API calls will be much easier to understand. So this made the reverse engineering a lot easier for us. So you'll see that I've got <clears throat> win main right here. So uh, win main checks for the config.bin file. Uh, presumably it stores some encrypted version of the flag in that. You'll note that it checks to see if there's a debugger. Uh, it checks the command line and if the command line is a particular a way that's going to be looked at in manage child process and we have this challenge create thread function. So first we're going to look at manage child process. So what manage child process does is it creates a, a mutex, a mutual exclusion item, 
and then it gets the error and it checks if that's B7. So if we look here at create mutex, what we'll see is the error already exists. That's B7 will happen if the mutex has existed before. And so what that means for us is if we're a child process, the mutex will already exist and it will come in here and it will attempt to attach a debugger and terminate the debugger. So it's really trying to kill the debugger. This is where it's fighting against the debugger here in this manage child process function. Since we're not going to be running a debugger, I don't actually have to worry about this at all. If I were going to worry about this, what I could do is come in and try to patch this code to maybe get rid of the code that is um, trying to terminate the function right here where we're terminating the process. Maybe I'd get rid of that. Maybe I'd change around these if statements so it just jumps down here to no debugger present. The other interesting piece of code is here in challenge create thread function. In challenge thread function. So what happens here is it's doing these compute hashes. Uh, these I think basically are changing the value of some global variable and you have to go through all of these to make sure the flag gets decrypted properly. So that sort of tries to prevent you from just immediately jumping to the decrypt flag, making you go through this process. So we see this do while true loop. So this just runs forever. Every five seconds, it will create a child process and then it's going to get back uh, a value. So this value is going to let me know, well, this, is the, this is the process number, right? So I'll rename that. So that's my PID. And then we check that we're now waiting for the object and we get the exit code um, of our process. These exit codes came from that uh, manage child process function. So what we don't see here is any code that's going to give us the flag. So this, this code loops forever. Now what we see here in the assembly code though, we come down here to the bottom of the loop, there's this unconditional jump that never allows us to get to this decrypt flag. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to clear that instruction. And I'm going to actually just change these to be knobs. So I'll put five no op instructions. Uh, the shortcut for that is control shift G. And now when it disassembles it, what you'll see is it's going to go through this. If there's no debugger, we're not going to use the debugger at all. And it's going to come down here, decrypt the flag and print the flag to the debug messages. Because I have that debug view program, I don't need a debugger at all. All right, so now I can export this program. And so I'll export it as, you know, Windows patch. This is basically the second thing I tried. So well, this patch two, and it's now written out the file with this changed code. So I go back now into my virtual machine. I still have debug view on, and uh, get out of my way. This is not the right one. I think that's just patch and not patch two. Let me go to 
patch two. So it runs this program. We wait our five seconds and then it pops up this message, you got the flag. And so there's going to be uh, my flag, which we'll be able to put into the website.